this i want to give you information regarding yaith annual state telangana conference which is going to be held on 15th and 16th in karimnagar at pratima institute of medical sciences where you can have poster paper presentations gold medal and quiz competition also this is the registration form you have to fill these are the registration fee details after paying the fees through the bank or uh, you have to try the send the bank details or transaction receipt along with the filled form to this ira mail g ira mail that is ira ts chapter at the rate of gmail.com uh, my talk is on day one so please attend the conference coming to the first case 24 year male with pain and swelling in the knees since eight months you can see there is a multiple there are multiple hypotense round to oval nodular lesions noted within the joint space and even extending the suprapatellar recess here this is another case where you can see free fluid with multiple hypotense rounded areas noted within the free fluid so when these are classical multiple loose bodies so whenever you see case see multiple loose bodies within the joint space with this imaging features definitely suspect synovial osteochondromatosis so this synovial osteochondromatosis is also called richel syndrome there are two main types one is primary synovial chondromatosis and other one is secondary primary occurs in young age where multiple or no numerous loose bodies are seen they are smaller round to oval of uniform sizes and they are not associated with degenerative changes whereas in secondary chondromatosis there are multiple loose bodies with associated history of trauma osteoarthrosis or arthritis and neuropathy so most common differential can be pigmented villain nodular synovitis synovial muscular malformation or synovitis so remember whenever you see multiple loose bodies within the joint uh, definitely suspect synovial osteochondromatosis next case 35 year male with pain and swelling in the knees in 6 month you can see this there is multiple frond like projections noted within the synovium thickening of the synovium there is a free fluid noted within the joint space even extending into the suprapatellar recess there is a small baker cyst and the, these uh, frond like synovial projections are showing minimal blooming on gre and typically on t1 weighted images these frond like projections have are show i have sim signal intensity similar to that of the fat so suggest you of fat like projections of the synovium and they are resemble the branching of a tree so this is the branching of a tree so this is a typically a case of lipoma arborescence next case uh, young male young male who presented with swelling of the medial anterior of the clavicle and even swelling in the neck so here you can see medial two thirds of the clavicle is enlarged there are both lytic and sclerotic areas and even lucent areas on mri you can see there is a, a marrow edema with adjacent periostitis and even adjacent free fluid and collection with adjacent edema extending even into the neck so when and this patient also doesn't have fever uh, at present but he has previous history of recurrent uh, chronic attacks like this so this is a classical case of chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis the most common chronic multifocal osteomyelitis crmo typically presents in first decade most commonly in females most common site can be long bones tibia and it can be symmetrical but clavicular involvement is a characteristic finding which because this clavicular involvement is uncommon in hematogenous osteomyelitis these are the radiographic radiological features we have seen differential diagnosis sapho syndrome that is crmo which is cr adult equivalent of crmo is sapho syndrome where you have skin and even other uh, manifestations along with other differential can be considered as langer sans hysteresis and ewing sarcoma next case 60 year female with history of epigastric and umbilical pain on left side and vomiting since 7 months you can see there is a increased area of fat attenuation noted adjacent to the mesenteric vessels and this increased fat attenuation adjacent to the mesenteric vessels is displacing the bowel loops however the mesenteric vessels are seen at the center of the lesion and there is a capsule like see a capsule like lesion separating the fat density from the bowel loops so this is a classical case of mesenteric panniculitis so mesenteric panniculitis there are two typical imaging signs which helps in differentiating mesenteric panniculitis one is tumoral pseudo capsule sign and other one is fat halo sign which helps in differentiating this from other imaging differentials like omental infarcts mesenteric lipoma or hemorrhage or edema and sometimes in neoplasms so this whenever you see a small uh, curvilinear band of soft tissue density which is surrounding this increased fat density which is called tumoral capsule sign uh, that is tumoral pseudo capsule sign and the thickness can be lesser than or equal to 3 mm and other sign is nothing but whenever you see there is a preserved fat whenever you see this mesenteric vessel there is preserved fat around this mesenteric vessels uh, within the increased fat density so this is called as fat halo sign so this tumoral pseudo capsule sign and fat halo sign are pathognomonic for mesenteric panniculitis so remember this mesenteric panniculitis 
thanks to Dr. Thanks to Usmane Medical College students for contributing this case. Next case, 26 year female presented with two months of episode of vertigo, vomiting, headache, triggered by abrupt head movements. Here you can see there is a uh, bubbly cystic lesion noted within the fourth ventricle, projecting into the lumen of the fourth ventricle, with uh, supratentorial dilatation of the bilateral lateral ventricles and even third ventricle, suggestive of hydrocephalus. So this cystic spaces, cystic lesions or cystic bubbly lesions noted within the fourth ventricle causing obstructive hydrocephalus in a female with this uh, typical history definitely suspect cysticercosis which is most common differential. Uh, so these are the after treatment, these are the surgical treatment, these are the cysticercosis, this white uh, bubbly cysticercosis which are retrieved from the fourth ventricle. So, what, the, what is the most common CNS infection, uh, parasitic CNS infection is NCC. Interventricular cystic sarcosis can be seen in 20 to 50% of cases. Most common symptoms can be scissors, headache, vomiting and hydrocephalus. Remember Brun syndrome. So, that is Brun syndrome which occurs in patients with interventricular mass and they typically present with headache, vertigo and vomitings and they are characteristically exacerbated with sudden movements of head. And cystic sarcosis of fourth ventricle is a fatal condition which requires immediate neuroendoscopic or neurosurgical treatment. Next case, 44 year female with recurrent history of abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss since 2 years. You can see there are dilatation of the both jejunal and ileal lobes. There is even dilution of the contrast that is fragmentation and flocculation. These uh, valvae conventis are separated but they are typically squared off rather than rounded. There are widening of the widening and separation of the valvular conventis. And even in the ileum, you can see there is jejunation. So this jejunation of the ileum is called as jejunoileal fold reversal pattern. So this dil dilatation of the small bowel loops, uh, dilution of the contrast, along with um, widely separated um, valvular conventis and jejunation of the ileum, these are classical imaging features of celiac disease. Most common differential is scleroderma, where you can see hidebound sign. This hidebound sign is nothing but narrow separation between the crowded valve conventis, which are of normal thickness despite dilatation of the bowel lumen. And other features are strictures, interception, prominent mystery lymph nodes with fat fluid levels are seen in celiac disease rather than in scleroderma. Next case, young psychiatric patient presented with abdominal pain, distension and vomitings. You can see there is mixed density lesion noted within the uh, stomach. There are multiple air foci which are scattered within the, are trapped within the lesion and even adjacent to the lesion and there is gastric dilatation. Even the lesion is also seen partly extending to the pyloric antrum. So whenever you see this typical imaging feature, definitely suspect bizarre. So the, these are commonly seen in previous gastric surgery patients and psychiatric illness. Uh, the different types of bizarre are trichobizarre, phytobizarre, pharmacobizarre and lactobizarre. And Rapunzel syndrome is nothing but a condition where the gastric hairball which has a tail like extension which is extending into the small bowl through the pylorus causing gastric outlet, outlet obstruction. So remember Bezoir and Rapunzel syndrome. Next case, 35 female with recurrent history of abdominal pain, productive cough and weight loss. You can see there is a pancreas, head, body and tail are not visualized. They are completely replaced by fat, suggestive of pancreatic lipomatosis. Even there is dilatation of the bowel loops, the suggestive of intestinal obstruction. And here you can see there is mosaic type of attenuation. Even there is bronchiectatic changes and even few patchy consolidation areas. And even there is a collapse of the lung. So whenever you see pancreatic lipomatosis with intestinal obstruction and bronchiectasis and lung changes, definitely suspect cystic fibrosis. This is the last case. Thank you all.